Meeting of the City Council come to order. Clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> Councilor Della Sola. Here. Councilor DeFlorio. Here. Councilor Hanlon. Here. Councilor Mangan. Here. Councilor Marchese. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Napolitano. Here. Councilor Sacchetta. Here. Councilor Sani. Here. Councilor Simonelli. Present. Councilor Capone. Here. Eleven members present, Mr. President. Eleven members present. We have a quorum. Please rise and salute the flag. If I may, <laughs> from the chair, before we start, I'd like to wish belated birthday greetings to Councilor DeFlorio. So happy birthday. <laughs> chair will accept the motion to open public participation. It's been moved and second to open public participation. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have so opened. Do we have anyone from the audience who has anything they'd like to say? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to close public. It's been moved and seconded to close public participation. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have closed public participation. Clerk will read the first item of business. First item, Mr. President, is an order. A petition for a new permanent awning for Tacey Garden at 444 Broadway. Mr. Chairman, through you to our clerk, all papers are on. All paperwork is in order. It is a Dark red awning. Thank you. Chairman, favorable action, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? It's been moved and second for favorable action on item number one. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Handler. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Councilor Politano. Yes. Councilor Sacchetta. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Uh, definitely. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. 11 yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. 11 yeas, zero nays. You've passed the order. Clerk will read the next item, item number two. Item number two, a petition from Francina putting up a sign, Moda Carioca at 606 <coughs> Broadway. This is not an awning. It is um, a sign that projects over the public way. It's a small sign that, yeah. It's just a regular small sign that uh, goes over the public way. Yeah, anything over uh, 12 inches. What? Excuse me? Oh, are, all papers, are all papers in order? All paperwork's in order. What color is that sign? No, it's just a sign. Oh, it's a sign. Okay. Yeah. So it's been, it's uh, been moved second table action. It, Councilor Marquis. Uh, it it's, it's a shame there wasn't a, a it, the sign is nice, but too bad they just did that building over. Mm -hmm. That would have been an ideal place to put a nice awning on that corner. You know. It just would have brought it in uniform, but you don't have any objections. They got signed. Okay. It's been moved and second favorable action. Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor <coughs> DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Hanley. Yes. Councilor Mangan. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor McKinney. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Sacchetta. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. 11 yeas, zero nays, <coughs> Mr. President. 11 yeas, zero nays. You have passed the order. Clerk will read the next item of business. Item number three. Item number three is an order sponsored by Councilor Frank Capone as President Petition for a second class motor deal license from Umberto Costa, DBA H&F Auto Sales Incorporated at 3 Everett Ave. Council uh, is this a new license? Yes. Uh, will this be referred to the uh, uh, community, Committee on License? It's been moved and second to refer to business on community, uh, community, community development and business. Business development. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <laughs> it's so moved. <laughs> Clerk will read the next item of business, item number four. Item number four, committee report, order sponsored by Council Fred Capone as president. Committee on Legislative Affairs report to cause an advertisement which posted for not less two weeks list of res uh, resumes that have residents interested in seeking to position assistant city clerk and that committee on legislative affairs and elections receive said resumes, interview each candidate, make recommendations to the City Council no later than September 28, 2015, with the recommendation that Gwendolyn Welton, David Flood, and Sergio Canelio applicant applications be presented to the full City Council for consideration of the vacant assistant city clerk position, and that each of the three candidates be allowed to speak no more than three minutes on their qualifications. Accept, accept the committee accept report the placed on file. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the committee report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 
the piece before you, we have three individuals who have been listed uh, to speak for three minutes. So unless there's any objection, we will take them in order the way they're, they're listed. So the first individual will be Gwen Welton. Yeah, what we'll do is uh, if we could have you, uh, unless uh, somewhere else, we'll have you sit right at that table there. That first microphone is red. If you press that button, it'll turn green, and that'll mean the microphone is live. And uh, take your time, and welcome to the chamber. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, council members. Thank you for allowing me to take this time to present my qualifications during your meeting. My name is Gwen Welton, and I'm a lifelong resident of Everett. I was educated through the school system and began my career here in Everett. I am the right candidate for the position of assistant city clerk due to my extensive 20 year administrative background, including office management and supervision. In my current position at Woodlawn Cemetery, for the last eight years, I have been acting office manager in the absence of my supervisor. My personality is that of outgoing, compassionate, energetic, and overall dedicated individual. I have the ability to work under pressure and remain focused, meet deadlines, and prioritize properly. I have been trained on computer software systems since high school. Through the years, I have stayed on top of all the updated systems. I have experience with all the Windows programs, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, as well as company-specific database programs and payroll systems. Customer service is also a part of my current position. The office at Woodlawn Cemetery is set up similarly to the city clerk's office with the counter for customer service. Um, anyone who has visited the office there can attest to the professionalism that I have provided. I also possess experience with vital records as my current position at Woodlawn Cemetery holds records dating back to 1850. In certain circumstances, investigative skills are necessary to complete a request. Accuracy and attention to detail are important aspects of record keeping. I am also familiar with the new burial permit system and the electronic death registry system. I process the permits at the cemetery and forward them back to the city clerk's office on a regular basis. This position will allow me to utilize my administrative and leadership skills that I have acquired over the years. I am confident that I will fulfill the needs of this position in a respectable manner. It will complement the city clerk's office and represent the city of Everett. I thank you again for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Walton. Mm -hmm. Next candidate would be David Flood. Good evening, my name is David Flood and I reside at 31 Autumn Street. I wrote what I thought was a brief but comprehensive presentation of, what I, of why I believe I am the most qualified candidate to fill, fill the vacancy in the Office of Assistant City Clerk. I'm very proud of that document, but it ended up being two pages long, single spaced. I just cannot do justice to that document in the three minutes allotted to each candidate. But I would like the council members to see that document and ask for permission to distribute it at this time. If there's no objection. That document lays out my personal and work history, how my skill set applies to the position and the unique experience I possess that makes me the best candidate for the job. I'll just hit the high points of those last two areas in this presentation. I'm used to working in fast-paced envir environments where the ability to multitask is a must. My extensive computer skills should allow me to pick up on the various computer systems used in the city clerk's office very easily. I have experience in management of different types of staffs in various situations. As a former restaurant owner, I know that customer service is paramount. I am a fast learner, always looking to increase my knowledge base. For example, I spend a lot of time in the city clerk's office trying to learn new things about city government. I also work the most recent city election to begin to get a better understanding of the election process. I agree that the assistant city clerk position should be more involved with the city council in order to satisfy the needs of the member in conducting the business of the council. I'm certain that I can work collaboratively with, with each member of the council. Research is an area where I feel I would excel in general. I have already developed research tools for my own personal use that would make my life easier as an assistant city clerk. One major factor I believe sets me apart from the other candidates for this position is my knowledge of the city charter. I was the only civilian to attend every meeting of the Charter Review Commission. Because of this knowledge, I, I along with Councilor Handlin, were chosen by the city clerk to represent the city, of, city at a Charter Education Forum in Newton where Charter Review was on the ballot this fall. Another major factor that I believe sets me apart from the other candidates for this position 
is that I already have a good working relationship with the city clerk. We have already collaborated on projects such as aligning the city ordinances with the new city charter and developing a set of rules for the new city council. In conclusion, I strongly believe over the last six years or more, I have demonstrated a continuous commitment to the betterment of the city and a loyalty to the city council. If I were honored with the appointment to the Office of Assistant City Clerk, I only see those co commitments getting stronger. <coughs> I have been asked by some why I would want this job rather than return to the more lucrative field of software development. While there are many reasons for that, one of the most important ones is I'd rather be doing something I feel passionate about. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Next candidate is uh, Mr. Sergio Cornelio, former councilman, Sergio Cornelio. Welcome back to the council. Okay, thank you very much. New seat. Uh, good evening, councilors. I'd like to sincerely thank you for giving me and the other candidates an opportunity to speak before you tonight and for a great interview process in the Legislative Affairs Committee. Uh, for, you, for those that don't know me, my name is Sergio Canelio, and I reside at 45 Luke Road with my wife, Jacqueline. I have lived on Luke Road for nearly 30 years, and I would love to, I continue, plan to continue to live in Everett for the rest of my life. <clears throat> Tonight I am before you asking for your vote to appoint me as your next Assistant City Clerk. I believe that my years in government have prepared me for this challenge and set me apart from the other candidates. I have served six years as a city councilor, one year of that as a city council president, which gave me the experience of running meetings and working on city council budgets. Currently, I serve as a general manager in the food industry, managing 10 employees, I have multiple lo locations, and I am in charge of hiring a capable and energetic staff. As a manager, I have been given the responsibility of upgrading systems to make it more efficient for employees to serve customers. One of my goals will be to work with the city councilors and the city clerk to make the clerk's office more productive for residents and continue to promote a positive and stimulating work environment for all employees. My years in both management and as a city councilor have given me the tools to succeed in the city clerk's office. I am a very energetic person who has worked with residents in Everett for almost 10 years and would like to continue my service in the clerk's office. I thank you again for allowing me to speak this evening and God bless the city of Everett. Thank you, councilors. Thank you, Mr. Cornelio. Chairman. Any debate from the members? <coughs> I actually have a Council comment. Councilor Sure. And I just want you to know that I have been on the city council for 10 years and this is, believe it or not, we vote on tough situations all the time. But this is one of the toughest. We have three great candidates. We really do. And please, whatever we do, don't take it personal. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other discussion on the matter? So what we'll do is we'll have the clerk call the roll. You'll name the individual of your choice. And um, <coughs> I guess until we have a majority <coughs> of the Council, we'll take additional polling. So the clerk will call the roll. When your name is called, please name the individual of your choice. Council Della Sola. Sergio Canelio. Council De Florio. Sergio Canelio. Council Hanlon. Jim Wilson. Council Mangan. Sergio Canelio. Council Marchese. Sergio Canelio. Council McKinney. Sergio Canelio. Council Napolitano. David Flood. Council Sacchetta. David Flood. Council Sani. Sergio Canelio. Council Simonelli. David Flood. Council Capone. David Flood. <coughs> Six for uh, Sergio Canelio, four for David Flood, one for Gwen Will. Mr. Uh, let me let me let me uh, <laughs> just announce it. Uh, Sergio Canelio has six. Oh. Appears so before you make an announcement. Oh, okay. Council Hamlet. I would I would like to make a motion that we make the uh, vote unanimous. Uh, show that there's some continuity between us all. Second. So I make a motion that it turn to 11 to zero. It's been moved and second to make the vote unanimous, uh, supporting Sergio Canelio as the next assistant city clerk. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. You have so moved. So.
Mr. Cornelio, congratulations. You are our next assistant clerk. Would you, would you like to say a few words? And at this point, I'll give you the option. You can either speak there or there, wherever you would prefer. I'll, I'll come and speak to everyone. Okay. Uh, be very brief. I'm going to be very brief. I, I want to thank the candidates that uh, there were seven of us that went for this position as of last Monday and got narrowed down to three. And uh, we all got asked the same questions, and I know uh, they all did a great job, and I want to thank them for being a part of this process. Uh, I, I miss being up here in City Hall, I'll be, uh, be honest with you, and this was a great opportunity. I chose not to run for uh, anything this year to give myself a new opportunity to work in government in a dis uh, different aspect, and I look forward to learning a great deal from uh, a great man, a great city clerk, Mike Matarazzo, and uh, Mr. Hanlon's still up here, a former city clerk, so I, I intend <coughs> on learning a lot. Uh, I hope that I, I bring enough knowledge to get the job rolling, and uh, I, I thank you again for uh, supporting me, all the ones that supported me and who didn't, uh, for supporting their, their choices. You did a great job, and I appreciate it, and I can't wait to work for you. Have a great night. Thank you. So I guess the swearing in will be uh, Thursday, October 1st. Before the clerk reads the next item of business, which is item number five, I want to recognize former counsel Mike McLaughlin in the audience. <coughs> Mike, how are you? Good to see you. Clerk will read the next item of business, item number five. <coughs> item number five, resolution sponsored by the entire <coughs> Everett City Council to Senator D. Domenico and Representative McGonagall work to get some form of relief for compensation for Everett residents from Massport for the increased air traffic over the city of Everett. Mr. Clerk, I think we held this over because we're waiting for communication from the Senator and the, and the Rep. Do we have, do we have anything? No, I don't see anything. Uh, there are two letters for them. I'm wondering if this has anything to say. I don't want to open it because it's addressed to the Senator and the Rep, so. I'm going to get in trouble for opening it. It is here? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, our clerk will read. It's, uh, he's got communication. We'll have the clerk read. It's, uh, it's identity. <coughs> yeah. Okay. It's just a, a list that shows that there are four complaints from three callers from Everett in August of 2015. Okay. And then. Noise disturbance by community, 103 by 28 different callers. That's the year to date, though. That's from January to year August. To <coughs> year to date, thank you. <coughs> year to date from just, so it's January to August, 103. Okay. It looks like that's 28 different callers. Okay. What's the pleasure of the council? <coughs> council of <Paul> <coughs> the The original request was asking the uh, our, our state legislators, uh, if they can, could work on getting some relief for the city. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we've got the list here and, and comparing it to the neighboring cities that abut uh, uh, Logan Airport, uh, I'd say our, our call ratio is still fairly significant. Uh, I'm not sure that we've got the answer we're looking for other than just a list of the number of calls. So um, I'm not sure if the, if they're able to supply any other additional information, but I, I don't believe we've gotten our question answered. Okay. So I would uh, ask that uh, it be held over. Yeah, I, I may uh, not have been specific enough, Councillor. I'll, I'll rewrite that more in tune with the, uh, with the resolution. That, that really could be my fault. 
All right. I'll accept that. Thank you, Councilor. It's your fault. Councilor Handling. Mr. Chairman, I just was wanted to inquire where the list originated from. Who, who gave it to us? I, I think it came from, did it come from the Senator's office? I, I'm not sure, Councilor. I'm not sure what the source of that list is. I don't know if he had any contact from the state offices or not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. Okay. Motion so, was to lay on the table. Second, yeah. second motion for laying it on the table. So the motion has been uh, made and second to lay this item on the table with a more specific request from our clerk going to our state and representative state center and state rep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? If so moved. Clerk will read the next item of business, item number six. Item number six, a resolution sponsored by Councilor Salvatore Sacchetta to have the gate leading the Air Force Road open so the citizens can drive the car to the parking lot near the seven acre park. Now uh, we have a response from Mr. J. Monty, Department of Planning and Development. As discussed at the previous council meeting on September 16th, Department of Planning and Development has inquired with the MBTA as to whether the current access agreement can be expanded to allow vehicular access. As of our most recent communication with the MBTA this morning, 928, they have not yet issued an official response to the city's request. It is expected that such an official response will be issued within the next two weeks and further update can be provided at the next meeting. Council Sachetta. Uh, due to what I read in this uh, communication, uh, I'd like to have this uh, referred back to, uh, well, referred to the next meeting two weeks from now. As it states, they'll probably get an answer in two weeks. So I'd like to uh, Second the motion. lay this on the table for two weeks. It's been, back on next meeting. Okay, it's been moved and second to lay on the table. On the motion. On the Mr. motion, Councilor Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure I understand uh, what the good counselor is trying to do. Are we trying to open the gate for the cars to go inside the park? The reason why I asked that is because I got a few complaints that this kid skate in there. There's mm -hmm. a bike path there, and these and these cars are coming in, and it's really dangerous. So, th this is a park where people want to enjoy. It's a walking park. So I'm a little confused on the gate. Is it a gate just so you, so you can park your cars or a gate to go inside the park? Because of the bike path and because of the kids skating, it becomes very dangerous. Okay. So I, I'm trying to understand okay. it. For clarification, Councilor Sachetta, could you just respond to the, the question from the Councilor with regards to what the intent is? Well, I want to be able to get into the park. No one can get into that park unless they got a pair of roller skates. You've got to go around the city to get into the park. There's only one entrance to get in that park. It's down a small little path, an incline. If you're any, of any age, you're not going to go to that park. That's all I'm interested in. Okay. If they want to so, put a block there so people can't use it beyond that, that's fine with me. Okay. But okay. I want to be able to get into that parking lot with a car. Okay, so you're looking Thank for you. vehicular access. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor DeFleur, does that The reason why I want to clarify that, that, that is because I've got a few complaints. Okay. So, and I can understand the good Councillor. He wants to just be able to get to the park. Sure. Then once that gate, we can close it and put something there to, um, to block it so it doesn't become dangerous. Okay. okay. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Sani. Just on the comment, that used to be a road um, we used to be able to get to, Air Force Road, and we used to be able to go through that. So if it's a gate that opens up not just to access for parking over there to the parking lot to the uh, park but it's also a road to get over to Air Force Road to alleviate traffic and that's what it used to be before so I know myself was looking to open that gate so we can have access to get to Medford in a, in a less um, distance instead of getting traffic on Main Street so the gate does open up it does cross the bike path that they made but it also is, it's a road that was there in the past um, that leads to the park and also leads to a roadway thank you Councilor. Councilor Simonelli I got a comment here too. I mean, I think I think the thing is here that we we have to have these um, these chiefs. That, I mean, these uh, Tony Sousa and these people here. And this, this is why we want to ask questions. Sure. That's the intent, Mr. Okay. Mr. Uh, Rosie. Mr. Thank Mr. you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. That's the reason why. Okay. Any other discussion? The motion before Councilor Sachetta. This Air Force Road is going to be open for those people that live in the water, Waters Avenue development. I can't see why existing residents in the city of Everett can't use the same road. What is the big deal about using that road? I, I don't see any big deal of it. We're not, we're just going to cross that bike path. 
the road itself is meant for two lanes of traffic. What is the big deal of opening that road? I, I just don't understand why we're having a problem with this. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilor. Councilor Delasola. I agree with uh, Councilor Sacchetta, but the problem is we can't drive over the, the gas line that runs by the bike path. If we want to have that access road, that's fine. But I don't think we have the right to drive over the Goncourt pipeline unless we reconstruct it that when they go over it, if a truck don't come down, if a truck comes down there, it goes over the line, we could have an issue. I we all agree we want it open to relieve the traffic on Main Street, but we have to get the okay by um, National Grid or whoever is responsible and takes maintenance of that main, that gas line that runs through the bike path. Councilor Napolitano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's definitely a need for uh, higher level information on this. I do know that uh, you know the planning board is entertaining uh, uh, petitions for eight lots that will all be developed down GE property, and the traffic there is supposed to be diverted by Air down through Air Force Road. So whatever the conditions are that that make Air Force Road impassable for the park for the park, doesn't seem to be an issue with with routing eight lots, eight apartments worth of traffic through. So I think we do need more information uh, on this. Uh, you know, there's uh, Air Force Road has been there a long time. And if there's a problem with that gas line uh, being able to sustain traffic, then you know we got gas lines all over the city that we drive over. Then it needs to be reconstructed in a way to make that passable. But let's get the information from the experts here, because there's more going on down there than just the park or waters out. Okay. And the planning board, like I said, is hearing is having hearing a variance on a pro on a development that's going to put a lot of traffic through there. I don't know where the gas line is is in proportion to that. But I am familiar with the uh, bike path because that bike path intersects various streets, Medford Street, all kinds of streets through the city of Malden. So people do cross the, uh, the bike path does tra cross traffic. So we need, we need to talk to these people, get a little more information, find out exactly what the actual reason why we can't use it is. Thank, thank you, Council. And if I may as well, we, re we received the communication earlier today that uh, Tony Souser is tied up at the planning board this evening. The motion that uh, Council Suchetta had made has been seconded. It will, we can get to it if, if there's more discussion, we'll talk about it. But the motion is to lay it on the table to our first meeting in October. Ask those individuals to come back, Jay Monti and uh, Tony Souza, and we can get those answers then. Is there any further discussion this evening? Council Suchetta. Just Council one Suchetta. more comment. Uh, Council Dallasola brings up a gas line. That was never mentioned in last week's me last meeting by Jay Monty of the Department of Planning and Development. And also, this line, whatever they're talking about, has been crossed by large trucks for a number of years when they were filling Seven Acres Park, when they were doing a, a number of constructions in that area. So what is the big deal of a gas line there? Why wasn't it brought up by the Development uh, Authority? I, I don't understand it. Council Marquez. Uh, just, just one, one quick thing. So, Waters Ave apartments that they're building in, their access is all through Waters Ave. To, through the no, chair, please. Going to councilors, Road. councilors, no, cross the page, please through the chair. No, I know it's, whatever, it's difficult because we're so close together. It's a natural tendency. Yeah. But so, well, the Waters Ave apartments have access across the pipeline, but we can't do a regular car over pipeline it doesn't make too much sense yeah i'm not 100 percent sure so the the best thing is we'll have the experts here next meeting we can ask all those questions then right. but it's up to the council any other debate seeing none the motion has been made in second to lay on the table refer to the first meeting in october and ask that uh, tony Souza and jay monty appear all in favor Aye. all opposed you're so moved clerk read the next item of business item number seven Item number seven, resolution sponsored by Councilors Frank Capone, Pina Napolitano, Richard De La Soto, the representative from Mayor's office, the representative from any other applicable department, appear at our next meeting to discuss the progress and time frame for renovations at Florence Street Park. We do have a, a communication uh, from Tony Souza. Uh, there, uh, if if the council wishes, uh, we can have it read. If if not, the, if I may, from the chair. There are a couple of issues that still remain at the park that need to be handled. So the chair would entertain a motion to lay this on the table to our next meeting. Moving secondly, item number seven on the table to our next meeting. All in favor? All opposed? 
you. So moved. The clerk will read the next item of business, item number eight. Item number eight, resolution sponsored by Council Richard Della Sola Jr. and Council Peter A. Napolitano, DPW Director Jerry Navarro, Penn Nick's Media City Council. Speak about plans for the new sidewalks up. <coughs> Who would like to speak on this? Uh, we've got Council Della Sola and Council Napolitano. I did receive a communication that uh, Jerry Navarro is under the weather, so he will not be here this evening. What's the pleasure of the Peace Councilor? We hold this over today. Mr. if we could hold it over, um, we did we receive a checklist of the items that we have requested? So Mr. if we Clark, could hold it over until our next meeting then. No. Okay. Is there a second? Second. On the motion. On the motion, Council Simonelli. Again, I'm getting a little sick and tired of these uh, people in our department has not been here. I mean, how can we discuss business here when they keep on saying, they, if they're sick, they're fine. They're at another meeting, same with the mayor. They gotta be here, we, we want them here. Tax people want them here. We want them here. We're getting sick of it. Thank you, Thank you Council. Yeah. On the piece, has been moved and second to lay this piece on to over to our next meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have so moved. Mr. Chairman, unfortunate, unfortunately, items number 9, 10, and 11 were asked to be laid over. We have a letter here because uh, Ernie and Jerry are unable to attend. So. Second that, make a motion. Is there a communication on the clerk? There is a communication on item 11. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion to suspend the rules, take items number 9 and 10 collectively, uh, and lay them over lay to them the next over meeting. For two weeks, right. Is there a motion to that extent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there a second? Is it take items, and items yeah, number 9 and 10 second. collectively? Is items number 9 and 10 collectively and uh, lay them over to the next meeting? Okay, so what we'll do is before we act on that, we'll have our clerk read items number nine and number 10. <clears throat> I'm number nine, resolution sponsored by Council Rosa de Florio and Council Cynthia Sani to have water enterprise and mayor looking to putting second meter for gardening. And item number 10, a resolution sponsored by Council South Suchetta. I would like to have some head of the water enterprise department up here to explain the increases in the water bills that just went out, especially the sewer charges. Okay, the motion before the body is Moved and second to lay this over for two, well, to our next to meeting. Our next meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have so moved. The clerk will read the next item of business, item number 11. Item number 11 is a resolution sponsored by Councilors Brett Capone, Michael K. Marchese, John Lee McKinnon, Peter Napolitano, and Salvatore Sacchetta, that the mayor personally appear at the next city council meeting to discuss the recent trip to Italy by city officials and employees. Mr. Clerk, I believe you're in possession of communication. I am indeed. <laughs> if the council uh -huh. wishes, we can have the clerk read it. It's up to the up to the will of the body. Would you like to hold this over? Okay. We got a motion to hold this over the next meeting. Do, does the body want to hear the communication or no? Or do you want to just hold it over? It's, a, it's up to the up to the membership. Okay. If the clerk would please read the communication. <clears throat> Dear President Capone, thank you for your questions. As Melissa Rodriguez informed you, I'm unable to turn tonight's meeting due to conflict events at the school. Conflicting events at the schools, I'm sorry. Please see below the answers to the council's questions. I look forward to discussing this important endeavor further. Please identify each individual who traveled to Italy with the group. Mayor Carlo Di Maria, Jerry Navarro, Department of Public Works Director, Sabatino Rosa, uh, Everett Police Department Community Liaison, Steve Maisie, Chief of Police. Melissa Dresbeck, crime, crime Analyst, Everett Police Department, Andrew Napolitano, Communications Department, Eric Norman, Everett High School Principal, Andrew Tringali, Director of Modern Languages, Everett High School, Tammy Turner, Teacher at Everett High School. Please explain in detail the purpose for each individual that traveled with the group. All of the members of the delegation partic participate in events listed in the itinerary, including presentations, meetings, etc. cetera. Councils. Yes, Councilor. Thank you. If we could, um, if the mayor's going to come to the next meeting anyways, I know we just gave a brief uh, uh, explanation. I guess he could come and explain this whole thing. So I would make a recommendation to refer it to the next meeting. It's up to the body. It's been moved and second to refer this next meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have so referred. Clerk, read the next item of business, item number 12. Item number 12, resolution sponsored by Council Michael K. Marchese and Council John Lee McKinnon to declare October 3rd, homecoming day, the Dan, R Dan Ross Day. Council Marchese. I was uh, fortunate, and as uh, a lot of people have known Dan Ross growing up, but I had a, a very personal relationship, but I grew up with 100 yards away from him. 
uh, uh, down Cherry Street Park area, played all sports with him, and later against him in college. And he was a, uh, a hell of a guy and a hell of an athlete. And I, in college, when I played against him, he was a real pain in the neck because he was a, one of the greatest football players I've ever seen in my life. There's nothing that guy couldn't catch. And playing on subpar teams, they always find a way to make it competitive because of people like Danny Ross. It was sad that Dan passed away a few years back, but uh, what we uh, was planned for Saturday is uh, most rewarding and it's time that they uh, did honor this guy. And it'll be an honor for me to be there at this time. And just want to let people know the kind of guy he was. He was, a, he was a great competitor, grew up from humble beginnings, never forgot where he was from. And I can never forget that uh, house would just be in his variety. <laughs> you know, I also used to say, toss it to Ross. You know, that was like the graffiti 20 years ago because it stayed on there for 10 years. But uh, I just hope everybody comes down and uh, uh, listens to it and finds out what kind of guy Dan Ross really was. Thank you, Council. Council McKinnon. Uh, great man, great family, uh, came from a great area, um, and he followed his dream and he, he lived the, the ultimate dream. Uh, played in the NFL, uh, broke records, all that stuff. So uh, I think this is uh, more, than, uh, uh, more than enough, a good tribute to Dan Ross and the family. So um, I think it's a great thing. Um, as Mike said, uh, I, Mike, did you put that on uh, Anthony Grichy's uh, thing? Toss it to Ross. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to spell don't it incriminate wrong. yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a couple of years, but don't incriminate yourself. No cross the bay. Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. That's President. Fine. Thank you. All right, Council Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to briefly mention um, a couple of weeks ago, I ran into the former alderman uh, John Maguchi, and he explained to me he had this shirt on, and um, he mentioned like the classes, but it was also a Dan Ross on there. And uh, he told me that um, he was going to buy Noe's uh, <coughs> reversal screening on um, Ferry Street. And they're selling the shirts, I believe, that for Dan Ross uh, for $15. So if anybody wants to go buy them Great. before uh, homecoming day. Thank you, Council. Any other discussion? There's been a motion, favorable action. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved and second, favorable action. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Pass the resolution. Clerk, read the next item of business, item number 13. I know 13 resolution sponsored by Council Michael K. Marchese that the month of October be declared Italian Heritage Month. Council Marchese. Uh, yes, as we know in October, we have uh, mostly a lot of Italian celebrations. Christopher Columbus, roses on uh, soft tomatoes that they uh, make some <laughs> sauce out of, or uh, the old uh, grapes that the husband attempts to make wine out of. But I know we're not all Italian, but for this month, everybody's Italian. So. Uh, It'd be great. It's a great month as well. I second that. Moved and second <laughs> on the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? You have passed the resolution. Clerk, read the next item of business. Item number 14. Item number 14, resolution sponsored by Council for Capone. The city reviews snow plowing procedures and policy as to enforcement of the snow removal ordinance in preparation for, of the winter season. Chair would entertain a motion to refer to Committee on Government Operations, Public Service. Request a representative from the Mayor's Office, a representative from City Services, and someone from ISD. So we're going to make that in a motion. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You have so moved. Clerk will read the next item, oh. item number 15. <clears throat> the motion to adjourn is always in order. Yeah. Uh, there was no second, so. <laughs> oh, okay. It is always in order. Though. Item number 15, resolution sponsored by Councilor Michael J. Mangan, that the city considers waiving the excise tax for all military personnel. Councilor Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I saw this back a few months ago, actually, um, when um, Actually, former Council McLaughlin was in the hospital. I remember I saw on, on Fox News one day, Tom, Count, former Council and Everett and current Methuen uh, Town Council, Tommy Shula, uh, put a, uh, a piece together with the state rep, I believe it was Diane Desaglio up in uh, Methuen, about waiving the um, excise tax for all military personnel. And then just recently, um, uh, uh, Council, um, call it, uh, my good friend Anthony DePero. Um, had brought it to my attention that, um, well, like I said, that um, he thought this is something that also would be very, very good here in the city. So this is something I definitely think it should be supported, especially for people that are not here that have served in our country um, over in the over in the Middle East and, and so forth, and not here to you know be able to do that, and they're not using our streets. So I would like to uh, make a motion that we uh, send this to the mayor's um, office also to him. And I, in, in, in all fairness, also to uh, I was in the back. Before the meeting started, and Councillor um, 
uh, Mark Easy did say to me that he did reach out to, um, at one point a few months ago, to uh, Councilor Shulo also on this piece. So um, I don't know what happened between them, but this was just, again, brought to me from um, um, Anthony DePero, um, and he had talked to uh, Councilor Shulo himself. But, but I just want to mention this, and um, I'd like to uh, uh, get favorable recommendation to send this to the, uh, the mayor's office. Okay, it's been moved and second before we vote on the motion. Councilor Mark Uh Yes, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Megan, uh, Councilor Megan has emphasized this piece was uh, followed up about two months ago and as a favor to Councilor Shul, I sat back from introducing this because I believe he had the process of introducing to the state. And this is a, a nice piece, a simple piece. It'll be, uh, I don't think it had to be brought to anybody's attention. This was, was written in the paper. So if you read the paper, you find out that something like this was there. And um, I think it's a great piece. In fact, that, um, I wish I brought it up quicker, but I was just trying to be respectful to the council for Methuen and the process they had there to introduce it to the state. So I'm all favor for it. Thank you, Council. Council Napolitano. Thank you. Um, I'm, 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 first of all, I think it's a great idea. I mean, but I, I, I'm curious, I'm a little confused because I was under the impression that that was already the case. And the reason I say that is I spent eight years on active duty in the United States Navy. My last four years, I was stationed at Naval Air Station in South Weymouth, living in Everett, commuting every day. Uh, I remember the four years that I, my last four years on active duty when I, I, my excise tax was waived on my vehicles. So I'm just, I've got a question for the city solicitor, because I want to, just curious if something maybe has changed in the last 30 years. Been out of the service for a while, but, uh, but I remember in, in 82 to 86, when I came in to pay my excise tax, I showed my military ID, it was waived. So I'm a little confused by this. Okay. W would you like to have the city could solicitor? I, could we us? have the city solicitor come up, please? If we could please have the city solicitor before us. Colleen, welcome. If you could just identify yourself, and, and this is kind of coming at you from left field. I don't know if you're prepared to yep. answer nope. this this evening. But <laughs> Why don't you just uh, introduce yourself and we'll take it from there. Sure, Colleen Mejia, City Solicitor. Um, I, I don't have any information, but I'm glad to get some if you'd like to refer it to my office. If you could, because Absolutely. You know, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't want to see any duplication sure. where existing laws already exist. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't, then we should do something like that. I fully, I fully support that. But I just want to make sure that if we're, not, if we're already doing it, let's not waste time right. and let's, let's, let's make sure people are aware of that. If you could, I, Absolutely. I would actually like to motion then. <coughs> well, I'll hold my motion. Okay. Until, but that's the only question I have is that I think we need more information okay. to find out what we already do and make sure that we're able to enhance it if we're not doing enough. Okay. Do we have any other questions for our city solicitor? Council Megan. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleen, if you could um, get in touch with, I mean, it might be helpful um, with uh, State Representative okay. Diane Desaglio mm -hmm. from Methuen. Um, Again, I don't have her information, but um, I believe she was going to sponsor something, so I don't know why she, she would if there was something actively on the books. I mean, Council Napolitano may be right, but um, I mean, she may be somebody that um, we might be able you know, to reach out to sure. and to find some information. Thank you. No problem. Council McKinnon, did you have a question? I, I would just think that if maybe we could uh, send maybe a letter off to our representative and our uh, state senator just to make sure that. Okay, no, uh, no question for uh, a, a, a city solicitor? I would just ask if uh, she did know if there was any type of state legislation that's out there now, and if, if not, then maybe we could do something to that effect. I, ask one of the I, I think Councilor Mangan said that the um, representative who represents Methuen is sponsoring some piece, so, so there probably is something um, in the I works. Mean, I, I, I don't know if there's but something currently you know, on the books now, but uh, is this more to enhance what they're doing, or I mean, I, 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 if you, I'd look gladly look into it if you want to refer it to to me. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions for our solicitor? Seeing none. Thank you, Madam Solicitor. And then, just as a request, I would like to send it to our representative and our senator too to actually follow up on that to see if they can come back with something on that as well. Okay. Is there a second on that? Sure. Second. Council De Florio. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Working for the registry, I know that once a year we have something for the military. They get like free plates, free renewals. So there might be something on the books for this. And if there isn't, then def it definitely should be done. So the state does do something 
in regards to the registrations and license renewal. And uh, so, you know, like I said, I, hopefully there is something on the books. And if it's not, I definitely agree to this uh, 100%. Thank you. Councilor Napolitano. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, again, I fully support anything that is enhancing military service. Uh, most people don't have any idea just what type of sacrifice is involved when you're owned by Uncle Sam, you know, seven days a, a week, 24 hours a day. Um, I think before we send anything to any other offices, let's, let's send this to the city solicitor's office. Let's get some research. Let's find out, first of all, what is on the books. And then from there, discuss how we're going to enhance this and how we want to we support it. But let's determine first what is there and then go from there. So I would motion that this go to the city solicitor's office first for response in two weeks. Yeah. So we've got several. So we have a second on that one for the city solicitor's office. Okay. Council McKinnon. My motion. Council McKinnon. Yeah, I would, I would just ask that if there is something that's on the books, uh, it, it may need to be adopted by us here and then the mayor. So if we could do that, um, and then if we need to strengthen it further, then we can go on and strengthen it. Uh, I agree with my colleague on that one as well. Okay. So, Council Megan. Thank you, Mr. President. So my motion stands. We'll send it to the mayor's office as well as the um, the uh, solicitor's office. To, uh, Mr. Fowler is correct. It should go to the mayor's okay. office, but certainly for for, uh, for research from uh, from the solicitor's office. Okay. So you have a hybrid motion. We're going to send it to the mayor's office and the solicitor's office. Is there a second on that? Second. It's been moved and second to refer this to the mayor's on office. The motion. Council Napolitano. On the motion. Again, I don't have a problem with sending it to the mayor's office, but we haven't. Even, we don't even have the details. Let's get the details first. What is it we're requesting the mayor to do? I mean, the, we don't want to. We don't want to request him to do something that we are already possibly able to do. Let's get, wait two weeks, get the response. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to affect anything. It's not going to hurt anybody. Let's find out what's on the books first and then decide what to do with it. But otherwise, you know, you know again, I, I, just, I just don't want us duplicating effort that may already exist. So. Thank you, Council. Council Megan. Thank you, Mr. President. I certainly respect Council Napolitano's motion, but again, um, just so the I think out of respect for the mayor's office, they know uh, that it could be something coming down the line, and I just think them giving them a fair warning about it, I think it's just courtesy, and I just think that's still the proper motion to refer to both the mayor and the city solicitor. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, we have two motions before us. We have a motion to refer to the city solicitor's office, and we have a second motion to refer to the city solicitor's office and the mayor's office. So I'm gonna, because we have differences here. I'm going to take the first one to refer to the city solicitor's office. And there was something, there was a motion referred to the state rep and uh, state senator. Mayor. Mayor. You do have, you do have three. I was merging the two because the mayor's going to cover that. So, and we had the rep and senator too. So we had that, we got four. So we'll take it from the very, very top then. The first, Whatever, whatever the body likes to do. Right now, the first motion is to refer to the mayor's office before we act on that. Council Mangan. I would be absolutely willing to draw my motions. I would actually, um, with Council McKinnon, I would make a recommendation, my motion, and to send it to the mayor, the city solicitor, Senator DiDomenico, and Representative McGonigal. Yes. <laughs> Okay, there is, uh, is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay, it's been moved and second uh, to refer it to the solicitor's office. We've got a motion to refer it to our state rep and a state senate. We've got another motion to refer it to the city solicitor, our state senator, our state rep, and was the mayor's office in that one too? In the mayor's office. So what we'll do is we can, if there's any discussion on it, we'll just take it from the top. We've got a motion to refer it to the city solicitor's office. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? It's, it's gone. It's, it, it just went off this. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Before, before we adjourn. Council Simonelli.
was one of the best uh, things I ever, ever, ever did as far as I'm living. It was a great thing. It was first class done. I'm very impressed. It's about time the village gets a little, a little respect. And that was very good. Hope it continues next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You have adjourned.